Now it's time to scale up regenerative agriculture. I know you didn't cheat and click ahead and got to this video first. If you did, stop right now, go back and do what the team told you in the outline. There's a very specific reason why we had the outline that way is because that's the order in which the concepts build on each other. So since you have done it right and aren't cheating, we're gonna move on and talk about how we make this happen and put it into action. Step one is we have to begin with the soil health principles. There'll be a quiz someday when I see you face to face to make sure you've got these memorized. We're gonna first start with armor on the soil. That means protecting it from wind, water, and sunlight erosion. And by sunlight, I mean those UV rays nuking the microbes and burning up carbon out of the soil. We want that covered all the time, whether it's with green or decaying residues. Part two is we want to minimize that soil disturbance, and of course that means tillage. We want you to get to no-till or strip-till as fast as possible to minimize that bulk soil disturbance and especially that surface soil disturbance with implements such as worm burners, or excuse me, you don't call them worm burners, I do, vertical tillage machines. We also want to look at minimizing the input of conventional fertilizers and minimizing the input of herbicides, insecticides, and pesticides. Really, we want to minimize disturbance means don't do so much stuff to your field. Next, we want to focus on plant diversity. And a great way to do that is with cover crops and high diversity mixtures of the warm and cool seasons and also the four basic types of cover crops. Get them out there, get some variance in your field, mix up the microbial community, stimulate organisms that haven't been alive and working for many years. Also, let's change up the crops. Let's do something different instead of the same rotation all the time. You should make, as Dwayne Beck says, your crop rotation so confusing to weeds and pests that even you're confused. We also want to have a continual living root and plant at all times. Anytime that soil temperature is at 32 or above, we want to plant pumping carbon and nutrients, mineralizing nutrients from the soil, and pumping that carbon in to make all of the magic happen that needs to happen in the soil microbiome. And finally, as some of my friends like to jokingly call it, the fifth element, principle five, integrating livestock. Really, the first four things do some amazing things and they'll get you a, lot, they'll get you a long way down the road. But the fifth element doubles that effort and we really wanna help you get there and improve your soil health as rapidly as possible. So the key is, and we say this a lot here and on the podcast, the principles are universal, but the practices are local. So we have to adopt these principles into your local practices to make it work, and that's what we're here for. You need to select a trusted advisor to help you along this way. Ag Solutions Network members are local soil health experts. They're CCAs and they're PCAs, and they're here with a systems approach to help you meet your soil health goals. They're gonna ask you questions and develop a long-term plan for your farm. They're gonna provide you with outstanding products and strategies to make everything work together. And they're gonna have their shadow and their shovel in your field on a weekly basis. Because if you don't monitor and manage what you're doing, you're not gonna know how to improve even more in the future. At the end of the year, they're gonna analyze results and adapt to meet to your specific goals for your farm and family. And that's part of that process of systems thinking, evaluating what you've done and making it better for next year. And one thing that's really key to remember, your ASN member is invested in your results because if you don't get results, you don't work with them again. So they have a, financial interest in what you're doing. They need your results to be great so that you continue to work with them year after year. And I do wanna bring up and warn you just a little bit, there's a ton of information on Facebook, YouTube, and other contemporary methods of communication. They're good for information, but honestly, where is their accountability? If it don't work, what are you gonna do, not watch their video again? ASN team members have that investment in you and they really want your local success to be as great as it can be. 
So if you're new to ASN and you wonder, how do we get started? What do we do? Where do we go from here? How do we scale up regenerative agriculture? I want you to select about 25% of your acres. Yeah, that's a lot. But it's enough to really see what's going on in different soil conditions, different crops, and, and get a good feel for things. Plus, it's also enough that you're invested to want to make it work. If you don't do enough, it's just kind of that, yeah, that thing I'm doing over there. We want it to be a plan on how you're going to move forward in the future to make this your standard practice and make conventional somebody else's practice. So then once you've selected those fields, step one is we got to really pay attention to what we're doing at harvest. Tillage used to reset everything to zero and you could do anything you wanted to at harvest and screw it all up. You can't do that anymore. You have to pay attention to the silage chopper getting in there when there's water standing on the ground. You got to pay attention to your irrigation ahead of that, right? You have to pay attention to the trucks driving anywhere and everywhere in the field when they harvest or the grain carts and heavy trafficking. You have to pay attention on tomato harvesters. How are they doing in the field? Are they chopping up the residue and evenly distributing it or do you have big wads of vines everywhere? Okay, how are the almond harvesters doing? Are they completely messing up the level of your floor? Have to really pay attention. That harvest pass sets the stage for everything in the next year. Step two, we are gonna eliminate or minimize tillage. No-till has been done successfully worldwide in every crop. We want you to take advantage of that. And in fact, if you can't quite do it in a no-till environment, strip-till is a great bridge to get to no-till. But don't get caught in the trap of strip-till being the destination because you can do better than that. Step three, overcome nutrient cycle changes with the power to grow system. We want you to reduce those conventional nutrient applications, but we also want to change the timing of those conventional applications and augment them with our biologically based power to grow approach. Where we're telling that plant what to do at specific times, because rather than waiting around for three years like some of our speakers have mentioned, we want you to have success year one. And that's one of the major motivators behind the power to grow system. It'll help you make that transition from full tillage to minimum or no tillage and make it cost effectively with success year one. The fourth step, we're gonna be adding high diversity cover crops to your operation. Reason for it is, is we want a more robust soil microflora. We want, it, we want things to be more diverse and create a more disease tolerant crop in your field. There's some amazing things that cover crops do and we'll provide not only the seed and the selection and the expertise and deliver it right to your farm, many of our members have access and rent out no-till drills to allow you to be able to put it in an almond orchard on a dairy or you know, in a dryland scenario. They will help you make this happen. And step five, we'll talk about it now, but we're not gonna go there just yet because you're getting started. Be thinking in the back of your mind of integrating livestock, maybe in year three or five. What does that look like? How do I get ready for that? That's just one to put in the back of the head for now. All right, now it's time for me to talk to our long-term customers. It's time to keep going. Some of you have plateaued, okay? Don't plateau now. You understand the power to grow system. You've seen it work. You understand the yield and quality benefits, but you're in a routine. You've gotten comfortable. I need you to move forward and challenge yourself to the next level. You need to be doing high diversity cover crops everywhere, every year, no exceptions. Let's take the next step. You need to push the lower conventional inputs Get off of the fertilizer drug. Dial it back, let your soil work for you. Be bold, let's get to much less conventional fertilizer inputs. And it's time for the fifth element for you. We need to work with neighbors or other people. We've got a list of people who would love to be able to custom graze. They're all over, they're looking for those opportunities. Let's partner up if you don't wanna be in the livestock business. 
But the most important is, let's get a four-legged ruminant on your ground as soon as possible. And the other thing is, continue to develop premium, specialty crop and direct marketing opportunities. Many of you are taking advantage of those things now, but honestly, the nutrient density, because you've been working with us on the Power to Grow program, and the quality of the product that you're creating, you are not receiving a full value for. So let's work together, think together, how we can make you receive that full value. Because I just hate to see all that great nutrition being mixed in with everybody else's mediocre. Let's make it happen. I want to talk a little bit about fear and how strong of a motivator it is. I mean, this year, fear has run amok, okay? We've been hit by a lot. COVID-19, a year ago, we just had maybe heard of it. Now, it's all we hear about. Election chaos, can you believe it? I've never seen anything like this. Hope we don't have to see anything like this again, but it has been chaotic, to say the least. Water rights and availability are being tested everywhere. Everywhere we have challenges and issues. It's a constant fight for what was a long-term promise being taken away. Trade wars. Endless trade wars have really affected our almond farmers and they've affected commodity farmers greatly. And we would rather be able to sell our crops to people who want to buy them without having to get a CFAP check to cover the difference. Labor costs, skill, availability, all a huge challenge and will continue to be a challenge. And it just puts a lot of fear and anxiety into us of what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? You know, environmental and business regulations, and this year, weather extremes, fires, floods, droughts, you name it, we had it. There's a lot that we can have anxiety and fear about. But of all those that I just listed, guess what you can do about it? Nothing. They're out of your control. You can work with political action committees and those kind of things, but your direct control, you don't have it. So we need to focus on what we do have control over. So rather than fear these externals, I want you to change that fear to internal. Instead of fear of doing something different, which everybody has, admit it, I do too, I want you to fear doing the same. Realizing that your parents, grandparents, if we were still doing it the same, we'd have horses, okay? I want you to fear doing the same thing you've done the year before and the year before that. What if you could reduce your conventional fertilizer inputs by 50%? What if you could get premiums for your crops? What if you could have higher yields and quality? What if you could reduce water applied or in a dry land environment be less drought sensitive? What if your plants were more resistant to pests and diseases? All of this is not a matter of what if. The people who we are working with today will tell you this is happening. And we're excited to help more people enjoy the benefits of great soil health, great nutrition management as part of an entire crop production system. But what happens if you don't fear the same? You'll keep doing what you've always done getting the same or worse results than what you would expect. So we're here to help you take it to the next level. So I want you to think and just visualize in your, in your head right now. If you're an almond farmer, when the almonds bloom, the bees are working, it's sunny out, it's warming up. You can hear, you can smell the scents of the blooms. You can see the green on the floor. The bees are working as you walk through the orchard. They bounce off of you. They're doing their thing. It's just a wonderful, wonderful time of year. If you're a wheat grower, I want you to think about when the wheat greens up. It's been brown. It's been covered in snow and ice. And now there's that new life coming forth in the spring. And you're just itching to get going. And you know you need to put some green up fertilizer out there and start really taking care of that crop to maximize its potential. And you just have that feel in you that it's time to go and time to do something. 
or when the corn is planted. You've got 10 days of ideal planting conditions to get it all in the ground and get it in there right. And you've tinkered on that planter all winter long and it's go time and you're ready to make it happen and do everything right. At that moment, are you gonna fear the same or are you going to reach for that ignition key and fire up that diesel engine and let it come to life? Let the hydraulics and PTO and everything that's going on there, the whine of those vacuums, that feeling that you get when it's time to make it happen. When you grab that radio to talk to your team, what's going on, when you're communicating with them, or when you send a message to your management team that we need to get these blocks done, are you gonna send the message that says, I'm in control and I'm going to do it the right way? We don't want you to fear the same. We want you to do the right thing. I wish you an abundant 2021. It will too be a year like no other. I want us to be better, do better, farm better together. So fear the same, scale up regenerative agriculture. We can't do it. Only you can make regenerative agriculture possible. And we're counting on being there to help you do it. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed everything that Ag Emerge has to offer. And we look forward to continuing to provide you the leadership and support to meet your goals. Take care.